Now in the third and the final section, we will discuss the management of Babesia infection. And in the management, we will discuss how we diagnose the Babesia infection because we know now that the diagnosis is sometimes hard because of so many uh, non-specific presentations or asymptomatic patients. The, the diagnosis is missed and it can lead to the missed uh, or underestimated incidence of the babesiosis. Then we will do the different lab tests that can be performed for the diagnosis, how we treat different drugs that can be used for the uh, babesiosis and how we can prevent the uh, babesiosis infection. Indications for the diagnosis is if person lives or travel in Babesia endemic area. So if the illness occur after the history of travel uh, to the areas where the Babesia is common and if the person lives in the area where the Babesia infection is common, that's the first uh, uh, thing that comes to the mind with the, some specific special uh, uh, presentations that the patient might have Babesia infection. Present with a febrile illness in late spring, summer, or early autumn. We mentioned it's more common from May to October. So it's more in the summer or early autumn or late spring within six months after blood transfusion. Incubation period is uh, about uh, uh, one to three weeks for the tick bite, but it's long one to nine up to six months for the blood transfusion cases. And and the transmission from human to human is through the blood transfusion. So incubation period in that case is longer as compared to the incubation period as a result of the tick bite. Indications for the diagnosis co-infection with Babesia in cases of uh, Lyme disease and um, human granulocytotropic anaplasmosis. Uh, so these are the co-infection can occur, we mentioned, especially if there is erythema migraines, which is uh, very, very significant in case of uh, Lyme disease. If that is present, it means there is associated Lyme disease along with uh, babesiosis. Screening lab test for the infection, we have a complete blood count in which we do for anemia, thrombocytopenia, low hematocrit, hemoglobin, and haptoglobin level. So screening lab tests, we can do blood tests in which we do complete blood count, which can tell us that there is anemia, maybe thrombocytopenia, decreased level of platelets, decreased red blood cell, decreased hemoglobin, low hematocrit hemoglobin and haptoglobin levels. Increased reticulocyte count and lactate dehydrogenase level. Reticulocyte count is increased. Immature reticulocyte because of increased destruction of the red blood cell. Reticulocyte cells increase because they try to compensate for the loss and try to make up more red blood cells, which will be not very normal, healthy red blood cells, which because of that, they are also predisposed to destruction. So increased reticulocyte count and lactate dehydrogenase, LDH levels. Liver enzyme test, what that will show us, increased alkaline phosphatase, increased aspartate and uh, alanine aminotransferases, increased bilirubin. 
Then we have urinalysis, which shows hemoglobinuria and excess urobilinogen. So all these tests are very, very important and helpful. Liver enzyme tests, blood tests, and the urine test. Because of the destruction of the red blood cell, there is hemoglobinuria. Globinuria present in the urine, excess urobilinogen, and protein urea. So this is the lab test performed. Increased blood urea nitrogen, BUN, that can lead to renal failure. That is one of the complications as a result of this uh, Babesia infection increased serum creatinine. So all these are the findings which are very, very important when the patient has renal failure or about to have a renal failure. Increased urine nitrogen, increased creatinine level, protein urea, uh, hemoglobin urea. So these are the specific findings on the urinalysis or examination of the urine. Some specific diagnosis for Babesia infection, microscopic examination of Gemza stain, thin blood smear, here you can see microscopic examination showing us the Babesia in organism, in the red blood cell. Babesia trophozoites uh, appear round, Pear shape or amoeboid. You can see it's a pear shape amoeboid. Ring form is most common. Lack central brownish deposit and they are known as hemozoin. Distinguishing features, absence of schizons and gametocytes. Occasional presence of tetras, Maltese cross. So these are some uh, specific diagnostic features. Uh, the Babesia trophozoite, uh, which can cause infection and transfer or present in the red blood cell. They appear as round, pear shape or amoeboid. They can be ring form, which is most common, and these ring forms uh, lack central brownish deposit. Distinguishing features are absence of schizons and gametocytes, occasional presence of tetrads. You can see the tetrad, tetra is four, so these are the tetrads. Tetrads in human erythrocytes, these are the tetrads, require multiple blood smears over several days. Parasitemia range from 1% to 20% in immunocompetent host. And we know that parasitemia is very, very poor prognostic factor, can lead to death in severe illness as high as 85% in immunocompromised patient. So immunity is very, very important. Individuals who are immunocompetent, severe illness is less as compared to individuals who are immunocompromised. Polymerase chain reaction test can also be done PCR. Quantitative PCR. Next, serology, the test performed on the serum, an indirect immunofluorescent antibody test for Babesia microti, IgM titers of more than 1 is 264, IgG titers of more than 1 is to 1024. So that's the test done on the serum, which is indirect immunofluorescent antibody test. 
Titers typically decline over 6 to 12 months. So initially, there is high titers of IgM and IgG, but ultimately over a period of 6 to 12 months, these decrease. Treatment of the uh, babesiosis in adults and children uh, uh, in the mild to moderate cases. In the adults, we have atovacuan uh, plus and azithromycin for oral. So we have uh, in the children also atovacuan and azithromycin. Now, Babesia microti infection for severe illness, clindamycin, quinine is used. And then we have uh, clindamycin, quinine in children also. Be uh, Babesia divergence infection in adults, we have immediate complete exchange transfusion should be done plus clindamycin and quinine, and then again exchange transfusion because of the blood that is destroyed, lysis of the red blood cell, and then there is also clindamycin and quinine. So pretty much the uh, drugs the same for the children and for the adult, the dosage can be different. Other Babesia infections, Babesia duncani infection, we use intravenous clindamycin, 600 milligram TID, uh, QID, or 1200 milligram BID. Plus oral quinine, 600 to 650 milligram for 7 to 10 days. So treatment options available are all the same. Uh, exchange transfusion, clindamycin, quinine are the most commonly used drugs. By Babesia divergence like infection, again clindamycin, uh, 600 three times a day, four times a day, or 1,200 twice a day. Uh, quinine or quinidine. Prevention is uh, better than the cure. And in these infections, uh, we can, when we have the choice, we can take some precautions to avoid the illness and how we can prevent it. No vaccine is available for human use. No role for antibiotic prophylaxis. Wear clothing that covers lower part of the body. So complete clothing is important. So there should be no place for the tick bite. Apply tick repellent to clothing. Tick repellents are also very effective for prevention. Limit outdoor activity, especially in the re season when the uh, you are present in the areas when where it is uh, endemic. We should avoid the outside activity. So that concludes our lecture of babesiosis, in which we talked in detail about Babesia uh, microti and some other Babesia, Babesia duncani and Babesia divergence. Although the most common is Babesia microti and the incidence is increasing, increase about fivefold in the last uh, decade and it can be very very serious and severe and cause different complications like uh, uh, heart failure, respiratory failure, renal failure. So all these complications can occur, splenic infarct, splenic rupture can occur which can be very very serious and fatal. So hopefully you learned about the topic of babesiosis uh, in detail today. So thank you for watching scardia.com.